Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video, this time of Grand Piano, which is a film I reviewed, I believe, five or so years ago. Saw the film again, so figure why not talk about it. it stars Elijah Wood, who I like. He was he does a solid job in films like The Good Son and Cooties and the remake of Maniac. I thought he did a good job here. Yes, that is John Tuzak, who's also in the film. It's a thriller where it's kind, kind of like phone booth, but at a concert hall. Because the story, Elijah Wood, he's very talented on the piano. He, five years ago, got stage fright. Especially on this one piece of music. He kind of retired. Five years later, his wife sort of pushes him into doing this concert. Doesn't really want to do it. He's jittery. He's nervous. He gets there, and then as he gets set up, there's this one piece of music sheet of music that says, "Play one run, play one raw note, and you die." And so the rest of the movie is him trying to figure, trying to figure out how to get out of this situation. And I mentioned the movie Phone Booth because it's a guy in one location, you have a sniper. So it's kind of like that. Not only do you have these two who I thought were really good, you also have Alex Winter. Yes, Bill from Bill and Ted. Which I think the last big role he was in before this was 1993's Freet. It's like 20 years other than cameos. And it was nice to see him in the flick. It was nice to see a familiar face like that in it. Now, the movie is pretty short. It says an hour and 30 minutes, but it has seriously one of the longest end credit scenes because it's like 12 fucking minutes long. So really the movie is like an hour and 18 minutes. Very short film. But you know what, that works fine, because for this kind of plot, you didn't need to overstuff it and overcomplicate it. Eugenio Mira, who directed it, I don't know if he's done anything before or since, but I thought he did a really capable job directing. It's definitely a big feel of a Brian De Palma film. Certain shots where it goes through the concert hall certain bits of angles and how certain things edit from one thing to another. There's one part where it's on Elijah Wood's face and then it dims to red and almost looks like it's going in a circle but it's focused on him like the lighting changes or like certain angles, certain things. So it's def I mean, it's definitely going for an Alfred Hitchcock slash Brian De Palma feel. I thought the director did a fairly good job with that. The actors were capable. I'm trying to figure out how much I can go into it without spoil spoiling it. Well, you know what? I'll just go into spoilers right now. Fuck it. That's how I like talking about movies. The reason John Tuzet's character wants him to play this note to perfection is because of this thing where the guy who owned the piano had this fortune hidden away in the piano, and if you have to play all the keys right, but only the best of the best could play it. And so when it gets to a certain point, Elijah Wood says, you know, shut the fuck up and just screws it up on purpose. And he even says, you know, it's okay if you don't play the wrong note because the audience won't know. And it pisses John Cusack off. Him and John Cusack get into a little bit of back and forth because you don't see John Cusack till the end of the flick. I mean... With phone booth, it does leave a little bit of a, I don't want to say sequel bait, but like all oh, the cypher's still alive. Not the case with this. 
And like watching it again, I noticed little things. I like the way it ends where Elijah Wood goes back. He's ready to go to the hospital. He decides to play the piano right this time, like something that he couldn't do five years ago, and he screwed up on purpose to fuck with John Tuzat. Plays it right this time. He's about to ready to leave, and then you hear something click, and something opens, and you see like a, like the way the director does is with the lighting. Like you see a little bit of light that catches his eye, and we're left to wonder, you know, what, how much money was it? Did it keep it? Whatever. <coughs> I thought that was a nice touch with the ending. Or at the beginning of the film, once in a while, people would say, Go break a leg. And so when he fights with John Tuesday in the finale of that, he does break his leg. So watching him, I'm like, Okay, I get what the director and the writer were doing with that. This is one person that Alex Winter kills because, again, since I'm in spoiler ter territory, Alex Winter is the assistant of John Tuzat's character, and there's a point where he's ready to cut a woman's throat with a piece of glass and does this, and as he does this, it cuts to someone playing a, like a violin or a cello, like playing and don't... So the way it's directed, the way it's edited, certain bits of the lighting, there's this is one part where Elijah Wood's playing the piano, and the camera's sort of a little bit of an angle, or like there's a reflection of him that's at an angle. Like the director keeps the movie interesting enough to make you not get bored with a guy playing a piano for 50 minutes. And there's certain bits where he stops, and he was trying to get help, trying to message someone, or trying to text someone, or. I know a lot of people got mad with the flick as they said it wasn't realistic, that the screenplay wasn't realistic, the that shit didn't bother me. I don't know. I thought it was fine. It didn't bother me at all. I mean, yeah, I did. Sorry. I had a sneeze, sorry about that. I get that there are films I complain about, about realism, but in this case, it didn't bother me at all. I didn't find anything that crazy. And like most thrillers, you either go along with the ride or you don't. And it's just crazy, like, I see these reviews from Intercool, Twitch, IGN, Village Voice, Rolling Stone, Fangoria, uh, but yet, it, it's a low rating 9 to be, and no one talks about this film. It's never mentioned. It's pretty much forgotten. And I'm not saying it's the best of the best of thrillers, or it's fantastic, amazing. But at the same time, I don't really find too many problems with it. Like I said, it's a rather short film. Part of me almost feels a bit too short. But at the same time, I'm trying to think, well, what more could you do without overcomplicating things and overdoing things? I do think for a film that no, like, no one's either heard of or talks about, it's a pretty damn decent thriller. I, I definitely got a Brian De Palma feel for it while watching the film with the direction and the editing. Again, the pacing's fine. These two work well together. Uh, it was cool to see Alex Winter again in the film. Interesting concept. Definitely a little bit of an original concept. And overall, I think it's a pretty damn decent flick. So, Sort of a short, straightforward review for a short, straightforward thriller. There's one thriller he did, Elijah Wood, called Open Windows, which I haven't seen. I'd like to give that a look one day. 
but then I, I did like Maniac the remake. That's some one I want to pick up on DVD or Blu-ray sometime. Unfortunately, I don't have that one. And you know, pretty interesting these kind of movies. So this does have quite a few special features as a making of and interviews with Elijah Wood. Few behind the scenes stuff. Uh, no commentary, but it does have quite a few interviews and you know, the making of. But yeah, Grand Piano, I think if you like thrillers, it's worth a watch. But thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye bye.